Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Chew, where we ask the question, are we choosing the way of Jesus, or are we choosing our own way? We kicked off this week looking at independence, and I left you with two questions. Are children independent? And what does Jesus mean when he says, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it? We took our questions in part from Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, and Mark chapter 10, verse 15. I encourage you to go back and read those passages. The question is, does Jesus really expect us to go through life as a child? No, of course not. Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I talked as a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. It's clear that Jesus doesn't want us to live as children. However, what does he want us to live like? Why does he point to children? That's the question. Well, let me ask you a question about your childhood. Think back to when you were a kid. You were taught to work independently. You learned how to do things on your own. And yet you were still interdependent upon your parents. You were still dependent on others older than you to guide you and direct you, to teach you what the proper behavior was, what the proper conduct was. And while all this is going on now, I want you to think about the things that excited you as a child. Did you go through life with eager anticipation of the possibility of things? When you had an opportunity to go somewhere to see something new, do you recall that sense of excitement, that sense of awe when you went to a zoo for the first time to see animals that you had only ever read about in books, to see what a giraffe really looked like, or a snake, or a spider? As you went on these trips, or the first time you went to an amusement park, with all the big rides and the colorful lights, you walked around with a sense of awe and wonder and excitement at the possibilities of things to come. Now, whether your experience as a child were great or not so great, I think that as you think back, you'll find that you had developed a complete trust, faith, or confidence in someone or in certain things that they would happen. As for independence, we need to remember that we were created for community. We were created in God's likeness. So we need to be realizing the fact that while we are independent individuals, we are called for interdependence upon one another, to work together for the common good, to work together to fulfill the mission of Christ. Let me give you a specific example. People who are raised on a farm know that there are far more chores than there are individuals. Things have to be done out in the fields. Things have to be done out in the barn. Things have to be done in the house, to the house, around the house. It takes people working at their chores independently in order to accomplish the goal of the farm. No matter if it's a dairy farm, a, a beef ranch, uh, a horse ranch, it doesn't matter if you're raising crops. There are a number of tasks that have to be done, and everyone is given a job in order to fulfill the common good of the farm. Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in verse 12 of 1 Corinthians chapter well, he wrote this, just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is in Christ. And what he means here is that we all come together in the body of Christ in order to accomplish the goals of Christ, in order to fulfill the mission of Christ. In order to do that, we all have different abilities, talents, gifts, graces, and we work together 
in what we're able to do in order to fulfill the mission of Christ. Here's one other thing that I want to really get us to think about. I've already touched on it regarding a child. I think Jesus wanted us to look at the awe of God the wonderment of a child as we think about God and His grace to us, as we think about God and His gifts to us through the Holy Spirit, to go through life with excitement and hope and awe and wonder at what God's going to do next, to go through our life as Christians as wide-eyed about heaven and what God has planned is a child who goes to an amusement park for the first time, but to live in a daily sense of awe of God and His majesty. You know, Jesus lived His life this way. His hope was for the future that God had planned, and He knew that God was true to His Word. Which way are we choosing? Are we choosing the way of Jesus, or are we choosing our own way? I pray that as you consider these verses and the things I've shared with you here today, that you will invite the Holy Spirit to give you eyes to see and ears to hear God's truth from His Word. That you'll have a receptive heart and mind to receive the truths. And then, take action as the Holy Spirit leads you in what to do in your life today with the same boldness, commitment, and courage of Jesus with the same anticipation of a child at what God's going to do today in and through your life. I pray you'll have a wonderful day, my friends. Go in the peace of God. Blessings to you. Bye for now.